Friends, welcome back to our channel Learn with Geeks. In this video, I have invited Harshil Srivastav for the Power BI mock interview. He is an aspiring data analyst and is working very hard on his technical skills as well as on his communication skills to get his first job as a fresher in data analytics domain. So now let us proceed with the interview part. And before that, if you are new to the channel, then do subscribe it and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all the coming useful videos. And you can also follow me on Instagram. And friends, if you love the content, then do hit the like button. Hello, Harshit. How are you? Hello, Sasank. I am fine. Thanks for asking. Uh, Harshit, can you briefly introduce yourself? Yes, sure. So my name is Harshit and I have completed my BTEC in year 2018. And afterwards, I have given few years for government exam preparation. And, and after quitting government exam preparation, then I started learning data analytics and, and has done few projects in Power BI. And still my learning process is going on. So what is your current technical skills? My skills are Power BI, SQL and Excel. Okay, wonderful. So how many reports you have built till now in Power BI? I have built four reports till now. So uh, what kind of uh, data source have you used uh, in Power BI till now to connect? I have used CSV file and uh, and data from SQL Server. Okay, so you have some knowledge of SQL Server database also, right? Yes. Suppose uh, you want to connect your Power BI report to database like SQL Server. So you have different options of connecting, right? Uh, like you have import mode, direct query and live connection and all, right? Yes. So what do you mean by import mode connectivity? Import mode connectivity is defined as extracting the data data from the database and loading on our local machine and here there is a limit on data of 1 GB to be published to Power BI service and performance wise it is better and faster than other connect, connection mode and, uh, and how is it different from direct query what is direct query connectivity in direct query connectivity data is left in the database and we do live query and when uh, and we whenever necessary we pull data from the database okay we we send the query for pulling the data okay so whenever suppose you have loaded your table in power query for example and if you have to append the two tables so what is the necessary condition to append the two tables first condition is that both the table have same column name and the second condition is data type of each column should be same okay and uh, what do you mean by merge functionality in power query when when we have two or more columns and we want to we want to add it to an existing table so in that case we we use merge function and we join them on the basis of a common column and and there are different types of merge like lab join in lab join lab join right join full join and left entity and right entity okay okay <laughs> suppose uh, you have a table and you have one column which has a column called name column for example your name is written harshit shivasta and other names are also written like complete name is written now as per the requirement we want to take out the first name from that column in a separate column so how will you do that in power query in power query query we can use transform we can split the column using the using like space uh, right. using space we can split the column right right and the opposite if you have to do for example you have the first name you have the last name of a customer for example and you have to merge or combine those two to generate a column which contains the first name and last name then how will you do that in that case we can use merge column option Okay, and, and how does there, it come? It comes in Power Query on it is present in transform transform tab. And in transport tab, there is text column option. So from there we can use merge to join two columns. Okay. Okay, suppose you have uh, you have loaded all the tables in Power Query. Now once you have loaded in, in the Power BI desktop, you will be doing the modeling, right? Yes. So how how a dimension table is different from a fact table you know that all the tables are differentiated on the basis of dimension facts right 
So how yes. a dimension table is different from a fact table? Dimension dimension contains master data, and which does which does not changes frequently with time, and it contains it contains a primary key through which it is connected to the fact table. Fact table it contains measures and a dimension key through which fact table is connected to dimension table, and there is one to many relationship from dimension to fact. Okay. So you said there is a foreign key primary key relationship. So how do you determine that? Okay, this column will be used uh, as a primary key in this table, and this column will be used as a foreign key in the fact table. So how do you uh, differentiate? Or like how do you determine? Okay, this column I have to use for creating a relationship. So first, it it can be it can be determined by choosing a column, and we should we can check that um, whether it contains unique values. If some suppose one column is there. And it it is containing unique values, then it can be used as a primary key. Okay. And and how will you check that uh, that column has unique values? Check unique values. One option is that in Power Query Editor, mm -hmm. in column quality, we can check by clicking on the column quality. It, there we can check whether how many numbers of distinct values and unique values are there. And okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So from there also we can check. Okay. Yeah, we can do that from there also. Okay, what do you mean by like you said that two tables should be connected one to many relationship? So if two tables are connected uh, many to many relationship, will you support this kind of relationship or will you do something for this relationship so that it get resolved? No, I I will not support this type of relationship because many to many relationship gives ambiguous result when the model size is large. So to resolve this issue, mm -hmm. we have to create a bridge table. Containing unique values from of the column through which both the tables are connected, and afterwards we have to create the relationship between bridge table to the table first table through that column, and this relationship will be one to many, and also we have to join this bridge table through to the other table also through one to many relationship. So in this way, this problem will be resolved. You have you said that you have built four to five reports in the starting. So, what kind of schema you have practiced till now in the modeling? What kind of schema you have built till now? Basically, I have used star schema. And yes. uh, do you know about snowflake schema? Yes, I know. So, so how is it different from a star schema? In snowflake schema, it is used when the size of dimension data is large. So, in that case, we we do the, we do the normalization of Dimension table into multiple tables, and other than that, everything is same as star schema. Like one fact table is connected to many dimension table, and the fact table is present at the center, and the shape overall shape looks like of a star. Okay, so what kind of visuals you have used till now in your reports? Like what all different kinds of visuals you have used till now in the report in your reports? Yes, <coughs> so I have used. Card visual slicer, is scattered bar bar chart, donut chart, table visual. You know about stacked bar chart? Yes. So what do you mean by like, what is a stacked bar chart? In a stacked bar chart, <coughs> each bar bar can be divided into different segments, and each segment represents some category, and so so each segment can be used to rep represent. Proportion of category with respect to the whole. So you said you category. said that you have used slicers, right? So yes. how this slicer is different from a normal filter that we have in the filter pane? How this slicer is different from a filter pane, or is it, uh, uh, or are they both the same, slicers and filters? No, it is, they are not same. Sli slicers basically slicers we can it is applied on the entire page, whereas filters present in filter of pane. It has different options. Like uh, it can be applied on a single visual also, or on the entire page also. Okay. Yes. So this is the difference between filter and slicer. Okay. Suppose uh, you have a slicer. Okay. Okay. You are you are clicking on any of the values in that slicer, but yes. your you you saw that uh, two of the visuals on your report are not filtering out. If you are yes. clicking on on any of the values, two of the visuals are not filtering out. So yes. how will you resolve this? What can be the problem behind this? First of all, 
I will check by clicking on edit interaction option, which, which is present in format tab. So, so first of all, I will check whether it is on edit interaction option is on or off. If it, if it is off, then I will on it. And second, I will check whether there is a proper relationship between the tables which are loaded in Power BI. Right. So according to me, these, these are two regions which can be checked when this type of problem arises. Suppose uh, on the report, you want to create a card visual. And in that card visual, uh, uh, we want to have the total sales of country India, for example. Yes. Only sales of country India. So how will you create a measure for this? Can you write the measure in the chat box? Yes, sir. I want to clarify this question that if I am clicking on if on slices, if suppose three countries are there, and every time when I am clicking on slicer, for example, India, then it will show the no, 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 no. So yes. Whenever you open the report, yes, card visual should show the sales of country India only. Simple. So a measure which should give the result of total number of sales that have occurred in India. Forget that you have a slicer on the report. Just see this thing that we have a card visual and we have to create a measure which should give the result of total sales of India. Okay. 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 Fine. Okay, Harshit. Suppose uh, if you have to calculate uh, the last month or the previous month sales, then how will you write the measure for this? Okay. I am writing it. Yes, I have typed it. Okay, you have used a date add function, right? Yes. Oh, uh, do you know about the? Uh, okay, do you know about same period last year function? Yes. So where is it useful? It is useful when we want to get some data of uh, previous year for the same period. It is same as like in date add, we can use if we are writing date add and minus one year. Okay, okay, okay. So it is same as same as same period last year. Okay, do you know about filter function? Yes, I know. What does it return? It returns a table containing a single column. Okay, containing a single column is the uh, is the criteria? No, I can say a little bit I am confused, but it returns a table. Okay, when do we use related function? We use related function when when there is a when there is a relationship between the, between the existing tables, and if we and if we want to fetch data from that table which is present on the one side, so for fetching the data we create a measure in a fact table, and then using related function we fetch the data. Have you actually used it this till now? Yes, I have uh, using related function. I have created one uh, calculated column. Uh, so, Harshit, overall, uh, what all different DAX functions you have used till now? I have used calculate function, selected value, top and rank X function, sum X function, filter function, value function. These are all DAX functions which I have used. Okay, Harshit, suppose you have uh, a line chart, and on the line chart on Y axis, you have total sales. And on X axis, you have months from January to December. But when you have pulled months on X axis, the sorting order of the months is not in the right because the, the first value should be January, but it is starting with March. Okay. Some random, some random values are there. Overall, all the 12 months are there, but they are not ordered in the right way. We have to order it in the right way from January to December. So if this kind of situation is happening, how will you resolve it? First of all, I will go to table in Power Query Editor, and afterwards I will create a calculated I will create a calculated column which will be capturing month number, and it can be done through switch. It can be done through switch or e date or e date function, and afterwards once the month month number column has been created then mm -hmm. then again then again i will sort the month on the basis of this new calculated column 
So overall, you are in saying that case. you will create a month number column, and then with the help of that, you will sort it, right? This is what you are saying. Yes. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. So Harshit, uh, have you worked on Power BI service? Not much, but only I have published my report to Power BI service. So do you know about role level security? Yes, I know. So mm -hmm. RLS is used for restricting the data on the basis of logged in user. And it is of two types, static and dynamic. So uh, which kind of like, how will you differentiate between static and dynamic? And have you actually implemented any of these types? No, I have not implemented it. And also I am not getting it means this difference between static and dynamic. So you have not worked on Power BI service, uh, but you have idea about Power BI service, right? Yes. So what's the difference between a pro license and a premium license? As a developer, as a developer, which as a Power BI developer, which kind of license you should have? One should have pro license as a Power BI developer. Okay, and how pro license is different from a premium license? Is a premium license a user based license? No, it is capacity based license. Okay. So who who actually prefers premium license? Then? Premium license is preferred by organizations whose user Base, whose user, user base is not more than 10,000. 10, okay. In that case, they can opt for a premium license. And uh, what kind of, uh, do you know about different kind of access levels that we have in Power BI service for any report? Do you know about yes. uh, admin access, uh, member access, contributor access, viewer level access? Viewer access, yes, I know. So how a viewer level access, access is different from a contributor level access? In viewer, viewer level access, only the it is for the end user and they can only view the report and they can't do any modification in the report while in in contribute contributor level access they can they can do the modifications if required and also they can grant access to the end user or viewer and uh, what do you mean by data flows data flows are the transformations done on the data in power bi service and these transformed data can be can be loaded in Power BI, and it can be it can be used across multiple reports. So, okay. so in this way, consistency can be maintained across the report. So, uh, and do you know about data gateways? Yes, I know. Data gateways acts as a bridge between the data on the on a local machine and the power bi service so whenever any so whenever data is refreshed then it is due to the data gateway it is shown in the power bi service so harshit we talked about uh, role level security few minutes ago do you know what user principal name dax function yes i know so what does it, it do it displays the desktop name of logged in user in both power, power bi desktop and power bi service okay Okay, Harshit, uh, that's it from my side. It was a wonderful session. I hope uh, people will learn a lot from this session. And definitely you are doing a great job. You're working so hard and you're on the right track. And I wish you good luck. And uh, I hope you get your jo first job in the data analytics job in the data analytics domain soon. Thank you for the appreciation, Sasang.